Hi, boys and girls. I'm here for our next read aloud. This is called This is the Rope, a story from the Great Migration. Again, this is a Fountas and Pinnell published by Heinemann book, and I'm very excited. The name of this book, again, is The Rope. The author is Jacqueline Woodson. There is a girl jumping rope on the cover, as you can see. I wonder how a rope could be tied into the story and why it would be important. Uh, do you have any ideas about that? Any ideas at all? Uh, the subtitle here says it's a story from the Great Migration. We know uh, migration is a movement of many people, so let's find out exactly what the story is about. Some beautiful illustrations in this book. The illustrator is James Ransom. Let's look at this pictures here a little bit. Okay. This is the rope my grandmother found beneath an old tree a long time ago back home in South Carolina. This is the rope my grandmother skipped under the shade of a sweet smelling pine. This is the rope my grandfather used to tie the few things they owned to the top of a car that drove my grandmother, who was a mother now, from South Carolina all the way to a place called New York City. After page four, the author has repeated the title of the book a couple of times. When you notice that sort of repetition, what does it alert you to as a reader? That repetition. Do you think this is possibly a narrative poem? Do you think that that's an important message that the author is trying to tell you with repetition? This is the rope my grandmother held tight as my grandfather drove real slow past the people and big city buildings that seemed to go on and on. Love these illustrations. Those words held tight speak volumes about how the grandmother is feeling. What do you think about the change that's happening? Even if we look back at the change in art, you can see they're in a big city. Before, just looking at the art, they're in the country, right? So it is a big change just looking at the illustrations. So not only with what's happening in the story, but also with their surroundings and the setting, right? This is the rope my grandmother used to dry the sweet-smelling flowers. She grew in small window boxes, reminding her of the flowers back home. Where the land, she said, went on and on. You can also tell that this is a narrative poem because your fluency or your breath goes in a different way, stops to pay close attention to the punctuation when you read. This is the rope my grandfather strung so that my mama's diapers could blow dry in the hot city breeze. I'm beginning to think the rope stands for something important in the story. Let's keep that an idea in mind as we're reading. I 
making a connection right now. Have you ever hung something out on a line to dry or seen someone do that? Making a connection to when my mother used to do that. Good readers make connections. And this is the rope my mama tied around a small ducky's neck, then pulled it along singing, quack, quack, quack. I bet some of you can make connections there. This is the rope my mama held out to the girls on the block, her new Brooklyn block, a home of their own, that they finally owned. Mama asked shyly, anybody wanna play? That rope has been in many places, in many important places. This is the rope my mama first tripped on as she sang with her friends. Miss Lucy had a baby. She named him Tiny Tim. This is the rope Mama's brothers took from her room for some crazy game that little boys play. Can you imagine maybe a game that they could be playing? Maybe you're making a connection there too. This is the rope my Mama found again. 10 years later, when my grandfather said, we need a bit of rope to tie these things down inside this here car, like that rope we used to have from back home. Then he drove with my mama off to a college far away from the city. While up at the window, my grandmother waved. Think about the moments that the author has chosen to include so far. Maybe you can think or turn and talk with a partner or a person around you about what she's trying to tell us about this rope and the times and moments that she's chosen. To have the rope This is the rope my mama placed on the piano around family photos and me just a baby and then a bit bigger, already reaching for it. This is the rope my daddy used when he showed me the way to tie a sailor's knot two times around and pull it real tight. You want whatever you make or do in your life, my daddy said, to last. So look at the rope here, it's curving in and out among the photos. Think about, what do you think we're supposed to understand from that, that rope weaving in and out of those family photos? I'm gonna read the last few lines again two times around and pull it real tight. You want whatever you make or do in your life, my daddy said, to last. What do you think that means? What do you think her daddy's advice, how do you think it fits in with those pages? I'm gonna 
something to do with that rope winding in and out between those family photos. This is the rope my mama turned as she waved to my daddy and taught me to sing the Miss Lucy song out on our sidewalk right here in Brooklyn just last Friday night. Can you? This is the rope that held up the sign saying, we are all family at our picnic reunion in the big park up the street from our home. This is the rope, threadbare and graying, that I traded with Grandma for a brand new one. Then I jumped a new jump. B, my name is Beatrice. I come from Brooklyn. As my family smiled proudly and the sun began setting, as Grandma held on to her rope from back home. and her long ago memory of sweet smelling pine. What do you think about the ending? What do you think the rope stands for? I cheated a little bit. There's a note from the author. I'll read it to you, it's in the front. In the very front, it says, this book is dedicated to the more than six million African Americans who left the unjust conditions of the South for a better life in the North from the early 1900s until the 1970s. My mother and grandmother were among them. I thank you all for your courage and for making a way out of no way. JW. JW stands for Jacqueline Woods. So, um, do you think that you'd read the story differently now that you know that? Okay, another question I have for you is we know that the author, that rope, that to the author, that rope symbolized hope. Did it mean anything else to you as a reader? What do you think about the repetition? This is the rope for every scene. Think about that a little bit. Now, we also know that every author has a message or a theme as they write, as they write stories. So the books and these this week in this set, um, as you can imagine, um, from this one, if you think this one had a lot to do with, drum roll, with family. Mm -hmm. The other message that this author was trying to get across was um, for the rope was of hope. Um, the, the rope had a symbol of hope throughout the story. So um, the other thing is, is that it would, what brings us searching for a better life um, the, the rope was always a symbol of searching for something better in someone's life. So I want you to kind of think of those themes and those messages that Jacqueline Woodson was trying to give us as we work on this week's activities. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the story. I thought it had beautiful illustrations in it and had some wonderful messages as well. Until our next story, enjoy!